Well, they're just grooming themselves at the moment, Tristan. And they're still really enjoying that little position that they're in there. Nice and sheltered with the tree behind them, but actually there, there isn't much wind around this morning. Not like last night. It's definitely died down completely. So, they've got, they're very comfortable where they are. So, Alison, the easiest way for us to tell if it's a male or female is obviously by the manes. Um, the, the males have got manes around their necks or on their heads, the big older males especially. The females don't have that. Now, in a pile like this, it is difficult to sometimes distinguish between each individual. Um, it would also be harder with the younger lions, Alison. So the young lions that haven't developed male uh, manes yet, um, you might s start seeing little tufts of hair forming at about a year and a half, two years old. You'll see little tufts of hair, um, even even earlier than that, about a year old, you start seeing little tufts around the neck and the ears and the head of, of the young male lions. Um, but as you said, in a pile of lions like this, it's not always easy to see the youngsters, which are male and female. That does look like a young male, actually that little one over there. So this looks like he's got little tufts of hair around the head already. So the start of that mane, that beautiful mane. Now in different areas, the manes can, can be really impressive. Uh, we've got uh, the Birmingham males that we see around here a lot. They've got beautiful manes. And just came from the Kalahari and they've got lions up there known as the Kalahari black maned lions. Beautiful dark black manes and we did get to see some of them. I think it's purely based on the area that they're in. Um, occasionally genetically some lions would just be darker than others. A friend of mine actually just saw a white lion yesterday in the area known as the Timbavati just north of where we are um, and it, it's a uh, um, a slight recessive gene that does occur within lions and especially in that area and they saw a beautiful white lion oh look at that see the interaction between the lionesses as I said you know that we might get some more movement around them it is still very cool look, it looks like the whole pride is starting to get up and move around so let's see one lioness moved off let's see if the rest of them follow her You can see that interaction that those lions constantly grooming one another, those two lionesses right at the back there. You can see they were lying very close to each other. Now Siberia Zumi, you asked if I've ever seen a lioness that has a mane. And I have actually Siberia Zumi. There's a lioness that was quite well known in the in Botswana, in the in the Delta. And um and this lioness um, I, we don't know what it is, uh, again, uh, genetics or, or, or testosterone levels and that, but this lioness actually did grow a mane, and I did see her, I did see her once on safari about two, three years ago, um, we did see this lioness, it is really, really unusual, I've never seen or heard of a lioness in this area, in this Kruger area with a mane, but I wouldn't be surprised if it has happened in the past somewhere. But um, yes, in Botswana we did, uh, there was a lioness. I think there were actually two of them um, over the last 10 years. I think there's been two lionesses that have been seen in that area with manes. Now that obviously has caused confusion before with, um, with the other male lions that have come into the area. They see this big lion and they think it's, immediately think it's potential competition until they pick up on the scent and then they realize it's a female. But I think she did... Um, and um, get into quite a few scraps until the males realized that it was indeed a female and not another male. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Soraya. Uh, the, the lions do um, occasionally cough up a bit of hair now and then um, because they're constantly grooming and their tongues are incredibly th um, uh, rough. They've got very, almost a uh, barbed tongue is probably the best way of describing it. Little tiny hairs um, on the tongue and the, those tongues are so, so rough. And you'll often see it, the best best example I can give is when they um, feeding on a carcass you'll see how these lions will lick a carcass and they'll often lick away some of the hair and open up the skin of the carcass that they're feeding on with those rough tongues now that when they're grooming themselves will also obviously then result in them pulling a lot of hair off themselves so yes they do cough up some hair from time to time and occasionally you'll also see a lot of hair in their dung See, they focused on something. Let's just see what they. Little one nearer. Asked how many lionesses I can see now. Now, one, two, three, four. I think I see four or five. I think it's five that I can see. Uh, oh dear. One. Can't see that's a one, two, three, four. I think it's four that I can see, folks. Can you see any others? Big lionesses. Now again, with this pile of lines, it makes it a bit difficult. But I get five. have you got five too? Okay, so yeah, I think it's five lionesses. Now I haven't seen this pride for quite some time, as I said, and I only got back the other day. But I haven't seen them for two months or so um, so if any of you have seen them recently how many lionesses are still within the pride if you can let me know I'm curious but I think we can see five lionesses at the moment and I think that's right with the Unkuhuma pride Oh, hardly lions would probably hunt any time of the day and I say that because they are very opportunistic oh, look at that big yawn uh, yawning is often a sign that they could potentially start moving around let's see if the others follow so hardly lions as I said will hunt any time during the day day or night they are very opportunistic so if there's a chance of them getting food they will they will indeed hunt they prefer hunting at night though because under the cover of darkness it's easier for them to stalk and ambush their prey but it's not to say that they won't hunt during the day lions often hunt during the day mornings afternoons i've even seen lions busy feeding on a carcass and another wildebeest has run past and they've got up and tried to hunt that so if the opportunity is there they will take it because they don't know when their next meal is going to be all depends if the conditions are right are they able to stalk and can they get a bit closer uh, so Siberia Zumi thank you so it's, uh, there's the five lionesses in the pride and then seven youngsters seven cubs so we have definitely seen five lionesses here uh, well, both Fergs and I counted five, so I hope we didn't make a mistake. That's, that's the maximum I can count. <laughs> and we'll see if we can count. We'll see if we can count some of the cubs. Now, while I do that, let's head back to Tristan, who's at a dam, and see if there's anything in the water.